Welcome in. It's time for another edition of ACC Baseball Etc. presented by Pitch Logic, the system used by players, coaches, scouts, and instructors at all levels of play from youth leagues to the big leagues. The easy to use and affordable technology makes the platform accessible to every player at every level. All the metrics, all the features used at the highest level. You can go to pitchlogic.com for more information. Darren Vaught with you, as I have been. A couple to a few times a week in this build-up to the start of the college baseball season. We're having preseason in conversations, as we call them, with all 14 ACC baseball head coaches. And I'm pleased to be joined by Notre Dame's Sean Stifler today. Um, Sean, we were just talking before we hit record. It's not often I don't really have a pre-existing relationship <laughs> with a coach. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, we haven't really gotten opportunities in your your one year at the helm at Notre Dame to to get to know each other. But I hope you're doing well. I hope the off season has treated well. And thank you for doing this. Well, Darren, thank you first off for you know not only having me on, but but doing this with our league. I think this exposure is fantastic to what, as you're going to find out, the coaches think is really you know the premier baseball league in the country. You know, as far as we're as we consider it. So. Um, this is wonderful, and you're right. Getting, uh, I'm excited to get the opportunity to get to know you better and, and form this relationship, but uh, certainly excited to get on and talk about the Irish. Yeah, well, let's talk about this time of year, the preseason, yeah. right? Is it is it more more antsy for you? Do you like these these days in the buildup to the, the start of the season, or would you rather just fast forward a few weeks and it be here? <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 a great question. That um, well, I think the problem with this time of year is you're so day to day because of weather, right? Like we are such a weather depending sport, and I happen to be in an area of the world where the weather doesn't uh, doesn't cooperate. In fact, uh, you know, my my kids are on a two hour delay right now, so you might get a seven year old walking through this podcast here at, nice. at any point. <laughs> um, but you know. I certainly there there's an there's an excitement right there there's an excitement for the build up of opening day and and it's because of things like we're doing today is as we as we promote college baseball we've done such a good job over the last 10 to 15 years of promoting opening day and and building up that excitement and you read an article every day about different teams and and different things it's 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 you and your players do the same so there's just such such a build up However, you really got to you got to keep it one day at a time because again, this time of year, there's so much that can happen. From you know, the student athletes' schedules get rearranged, whether it's due to weather, whether it's due to maybe a practice needing to be moved inside, whether it's due to um, you know what you, you're just not ready to to do uh, or perform what you thought you were going to be able to do that that day from a practice plan, and you have to back off or ramp up, whatever it means. So, you know, I think you just really have to keep it, you know. And again, the opening of the season is not the final destination, right? You got to keep that mindset of, of continuing to get better. But um, certainly this year and year two for me, the juices um, are much more on the competitive aspect as more of last year is a little bit more of like, boy, I want to find out, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to see what this is all about. I want to, you know, I'm not quite sure um, what this team is about because we were just so new, but this year the, the competitive juices are just like, yeah, I want to. I want to get to work with this group and, and get out there and play somebody else. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, referred to the differences between years one and two with a program. But let me ask you this, and this is more sort of in a, a broad, general sense about Notre Dame, about the ACC. Um, yeah. What did you learn? <laughs> that I screwed a lot of things up. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, I, you know, every day I was learning. I was learning something new, and it starts with the university. Uh, the University of Notre Dame um, has its own rhythm. It, it really does. It, it is has such steep uh, and long tradition that that's where you know it starts there. And and so becoming accustomed to that community, um, to that culture, and just really, and you got to dive in. You know, you know, and it, and it will. It, Notre Dame will accept you, but you got to dive in and, and be all in. And so. So learning that piece was, I think, the first part for our staff. Then you got to learn the players, you know, and, and that's, you know, you got you to develop that relationship with the players and, and get, get an idea of what works for them, what doesn't work for them, how that mixes with what you want to establish as, as your vision for the program moving forward. And then the last piece, of course, is this league and the gauntlet that this league, uh, you know, provides. Very, very blessed 
to have the coaches that we have in this league that I get an opportunity to, you know, learn from, watch, pick their brains. Um, you know, every every weekend is a blueprint for how you should do it, you know, to be to be quite honest with you, no matter who you play in this league. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I think I think going through year one, there was a lot of a lot of learning. It's still baseball, right? Like it's still baseball. And and I was lucky enough to be in Virginia for the last 20 years where we played a lot of ACC teams. So I was familiar with a lot of the programs, but just not familiar with that grind and that gauntlet of what our regular season 30 games are. And so um, definitely in year two, again, don't not can't speak for the players, but I'll speak for myself. I certainly feel a little bit more comfortable in my own skin. <laughs> Yeah, it's understandable. I mean, the last time you had had a change of scenery like that, you were moving from George Mason to to VCU, right, to yeah, become an assistant yeah. for the Rams. So, I mean, that was mm-hmm. what uh, two thousand six, two thousand seven. Yep. Um, so it had been a while, right? Understandable that there was a little bit of a, a learning curve and an adjustment period and getting settled back in. So, um, sure. Well, and I think. As yeah, coaches, we don't get we don't. I'm sorry, but as coaches, we don't give ourselves enough grace on that. You know that that, that there is. I mean, it had been it had been. I'd been in in the state of Virginia since 1997. So you know, um, you know that's that's a long time. And and so I, I think I underestimated the learning curve personally and professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, just even just the life stuff, right? I mean, that's a that's, that's right. a big move after being in Virginia for so long, being in the same place and. Um, you mentioned the kids, the, the, them going yeah. to the same schools and, and all that sort of That's thing. Right. So um, good to know that things have settled and, and you guys are, <laughs> are uh, more adjusted headed into That's this right. second season. Um, well, let's let's get into the team. What, what are going to be the, the major differences from a season ago? 30 wins with the Irish a season ago, 15 and 15 and what? proved to be a very, very stout Atlantic Coast Conference, um, yeah. but by some measures, the best year in the conference's history. Um, yeah. What's what's going to be different? What's going to be the same with your your Irish? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a great question. I think the, the biggest difference is we're in a transition period where really everyone who remained off of that, that, that two-year stretch of super regional Omaha run Um, is really is really no longer here you know we're transitioning from that we have 22 newcomers um, on the roster right now Um, you know and and we are super excited about them and super excited about the talent level in the program but at the same time there is a transition happening from kind of that you know old you know older mature team that had been through some some battles and and been battle tested Um, and those you know the remainder of those guys have, have moved on and now we have a lot of fresh faces and and, and a lot of guys have been in the program. They just haven't been asked to perform and, and to have a, a main role. And we're gonna, you're going to see that this year around the ball, around the ball diamond, is that we're going to have a lot of guys who have been in the program for two or three years, but had not been asked to take on a leading role. Um, but the biggest thing that I think you're going to see this year is a little bit more consistency out of the pitching staff. Um, I, I thought we pitched really, really well last year. However, it, it just, you know, at times last year, it felt like that movie Fifty First Dates. It was almost like every time we went out in the field, we were we were like getting to to know each other and and not quite sure what to expect. Um, you know, just because we were young on the mound and 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 we were so new on the on the mound last year, and so so having guys that have gone through that, uh, you know, somewhat last year, and there's a little bit more consistency. I think you also see in year two. I don't I don't know if buy in is the right word, but guys are just more comfortable with. My language, my expectations, our coaching staff's language, how we kind of the rhythms of how we expect practice to go, the rhythm, the rhythms of what we're going to do. Um, you know, so I just think you see guys that are a little bit just more understanding of what to expect. So I think I'm hoping it starts it starts from there. And then I'm, I'm really, really hoping, you know, offensively on the other side of the baseball is just uh, maturation and maturity. That That's the biggest thing I'm hoping to see is some of our younger guys or guys who haven't been here and uh, or haven't played a big role here, uh, just continue to mature and continue to grow up on the field. Yeah. 20 to, 22 newcomers is a lot. And is that that's that's freshmen and transfers combined. I know you get a lot of transfers um, incoming on this team. At this point, you're, you're through a fall. You are through a, a week or two of of practice in, in the lead up to the spring. Are you 
in a place where you have a, a, a relatively firm grasp on like what your lineup's going to look like, what the, the weekend rotation's going to look like, any of that? Yeah. yeah, I think I think when it comes to I think every coach will tell you you're trying to get to about 12 right positional players, you know, you know that you think will kind of rotate, rotate through. And you can probably, you know, for us, I know I can probably look at six to seven guys I think are going to play for certain every day. And there might be three or four spots that are kind of, you know, we're looking at a rotate DH catcher, maybe, maybe an outfield position. And the same thing happens in the, um, in the pitching staff, you know, you're trying to establish roles, lengthen guys out right now. You kind of know who those nine guys are probably right now that you're going to have to lean on. Now it's about kind of putting them into the right pieces. And I think, I think the trend in college baseball is you see very few teams maybe Wake Forest a year ago can 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 go into a year saying this guy's going to pitch in this role this guy's going to pitch in this role this guy's going to pitch in this in that role most of us are you know you start with your best plans and then a lot of times they flip you know guys who who were a starter go to the bullpen bullpen guys come you know you just got to kind of kind of figure out those roles as the season goes on the season ha- has its own rhythm but i certainly think we're getting close and i feel much closer like i said right now than i did a year ago yeah. Uh, let me start with the the lineup and we'll get into some specifics here. Um, as you mentioned, those those guys who um, had been there and been to yeah. some pretty big spots when you arrived, uh, for the most part, gone, right? Uh, yeah. Team's leading hitter in terms of average was Zach Preisner last year. Um, no more him, no more Brooks Coetzee, right? Um there's a, a lot of names that that exit. Who who you mentioned those who ha- just haven't really been called upon. They've been in the program but haven't been called upon. Who and, and I don't I don't think I'm asking you to like spring unexpected um, expectations on a player when I ask you this, no. right? Like if if the, if if you're expecting them to do well, you you probably had that conversation, or it's at the yep. very least implied. Who who were yep. some. Who are some of those guys who have been with the program who you expect more out of and, and who are, are going to definitely get more opportunities this season? Well, Darren, you're right. And I agree with you. Your best players need to know that they're your best players. You know, I, I'm a big believer in that. And you should you should you should talk to them that way and, and, and set those expectations for them. Um, I think for us, it's going to start with Jack Penny. Um, Jack started, you know, almost every game for us at third base last year, got hurt. Um, the second to last weekend uh, of the regular season last year. And we and that, that really affected us down the stretch. I really believe that. And I believe if Jack hadn't gotten hurt, we would have played in postseason. Um, but uh, Jack Penny is going to, he's going to start shortstop for us and, and hit the top of our lineup. And that's, you know, he, now that transition to shortstop will be new for him and new for us. Um, so, you know, you know, we'll see how that goes. And, and, and so far he's been unbelievable at it. So we're really excited about him, but we'll start with him. And really, from there, we're going to stay up the middle with Estevan Moreno as a freshman last year, and and, and you know I think everybody everybody that watches Estevan sees his skill set that he has, and you know obviously we left him out there last year, and he took some of his lumps in ACC play, and but I think there is a lot of ability there, and and also up the middle uh, we have a center field catalyst and T.J. Williams, guy that hit the top of our lineup last year, really evolved into that everyday starting role last year. He's had a Really productive summer and summer ball has come back and looks like he's ready to uh, to really um, solidify the top end of our, our lineup as well. So it's going to start with those three guys who played somewhat significantly for us last year. Now we're going to ask them to kind of be the cornerstones. And then, as you mentioned, we did get some we did get some graduate transfers. You know, Notre Dame is a university that doesn't really. Uh, we don't really play in the transfer portal when it comes to undergrad transfers, but for graduate transfers, we can get some guys into grad school. And so, um, you know, we are really excited about a couple outfield additions and Tito Flores uh, came in over to us from uh, the university of Michigan, you know, David Glancy from St. John's um, over in, over in New York. He is uh, both those guys have the ability, you know, Tito's kind of uh, reminds me actually of Brooks Coates. It's funny you mentioned, but the kind of that grinder can hit anywhere from lead off to the middle of your lineup. David's got a little bit more explosion in him. You know, he's kind of anytime he impacts the baseball, um, you know, exciting things happen. You know, he's he's got some splash play in him, in him for sure. So certainly excited about those two. 
Simon Baumgart coming over from Tulane, you know, he had double digit home runs, double digit doubles for those guys last year at over 50 RBIs. Having an opportunity to bring him in and he's going to help play some infield. And then uh, Josh Hahn, um, who comes over from UCLA, was one of their top hitters last year. He'll bring some left handed power to us. So I think if you can take those returners, solidify those guys around them, I think you have a chance to. Um, to put together a very, very solid lineup that's going to be able to uh, be very interchangeable, have some length to it, and do and, and be versatile uh, as far as ways to score. Man, that's that's um that's an encouraging bunch, right? When you talk about what those those players did at their last stops and and what they're in, what they're capable of, in addition to the guys you've got coming back. So it's it sounds like um, uh, there might even be a little bit more. St- solidity there that uh that I, than I even imagined in the in the lineup um with the pitching staff Jackson Denny's is a, a familiar name I know you got some uh, some more guys a few of them who are, are going to be back and, and contributing um but a, a few transfers there and even maybe a, a freshman or two that, that look to make an impact yeah, I mean, and we'll start with Jackson Denny's. I mean, I watched him throw a bullpen last night, and, and he looks – he's just a different guy. He's just really emerging. And I'm ready for people to see um, that he is a frontline ACC caliber starter in this league, and, and we really believe that. And it's it's a it's a really tough angle, some really tough metrics, you know, and we believe that he's got an opportunity to uh, to really impact the league. So I'm really, really happy with what we're, what we're seeing from him and – you know, I think there's, there's John, I'll, I'll interrupt just quickly on Jackson, yeah. too. Um, you know, we talk about all the other guys who weren't part of those that the success of the team yeah. prior to your your getting there. Um, he was there. And I, I recall yep. a very specific situation where uh, Link had put him in in a bases loaded tight late game situation at the ACC championship, not last year, but the year before in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And he handled it really well so yeah you know that's a it's a proven guy in big spots and that's the starting point so if, that, if the progress physically is there like you're saying I mean that's that's really good news that's correct and I think last year was kind of him you know emerging and figuring out hey can I can I pitch in this league is it am I you know as you know how do I learn how to do this and now he has that confidence and you can just see it in his stuff you know you can just see it in his stuff and the way he goes about um the way he's going about his work and he's just he's just carrying himself much different if that if that makes sense and and there's you know there are other guys too returning off the team you know Raddick Burkholz was a key piece for us out of the bullpen last year he's back throwing the ball really really well we're really excited about some sophomores Caden Spivey and David Lally both of which um you know we used with some training wheels last year and kind of brought them on slowly but both those guys have taken huge steps in their velo both of you know have been you know touching mid 90s and 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 pitching 93 94 so both of their development has really has really come on so we're super super excited about those guys you're right there's a couple freshmen in there um, one we're really really excited about or two we're really excited about from the fall Jack Riddell and Keenan Mork both of those guys um, both mid 90 arms Big, tall, strong freshmen. Both have good feel for breaking balls and, and pitch ability. So, you know, they're they're going to be guys who continue to merge. I think both of them have an opportunity to be to be starters down the down the line for us for sure. If not at the back end of of this year, um, you know. So so excited to add those guys. We do have some transfers. Um, you know, we went out and tried to solidify. We were looking for some some more looks, some help in the back end of the bullpen. We were able to bring in Nate Hardman um, from Evansville University. Nate was their closer for the last two years. Um, you know, he, he has, he's had almost, you know, I believe he's had about 20 saves in the last two years for Evansville. Uh, so a guy that has that type of experience on the back end. Uh, Bennett Flynn from Davidson. You know, Bennett's kind of a kind of a, got a very different look, got a high slot, high carry, big time breaking ball. He's pitched in some really big games at Davidson. Um, and put up some really good numbers over his career. So, we're, you know, we're certainly excited excited about him. And then um, a guy we've really been uh, – that's really intrigued us is Will Jacobson. Will came in. He was a two-way player from Harvard who's just concentrating on his pitching right now. And Will has uh, Will has really shown 
the ability to uh, to carry his velocity in the mid 90s um, with a hard slider, the ability to start to lengthen out. So I think he's going to impact the starting rotation as well. So, I mean, like I said, I, I feel like the the pitching staff has a lot more consistency in it. There's there's others you add in there. Matt Bedford, you know, at some point we're hoping to have um, Jack Finley back. He's working hard on his rehab. So there's pieces that uh, that we are really excited about. Talk to me. We we, um, we got through the the year one to year two stuff, and somehow didn't didn't approach this this topic. Talk to me about and you talked about weather too. What's it like scheduling there, and and <laughs> what have you learned about you know like what your approach needs to be going forward when it comes to the scheduling? I mean, you you guys start on the road. Obviously, I think that's you know the the usual. Um, yeah. It it's. And you you know you're not at the only program where this is uh, a challenge or sure. or opportunity, however you want to look at it. Um, but it you you need to be strategic about the way that you schedule the beginning of your season. Um, just like how have you wrapped your head around that? Yeah. Well, you know, any coach, I think every coach would tell you that the something that that drives them crazy is scheduling. Right. Like it's 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 one of the toughest things to do is trying to figure out opponents, RPI, home versus away, um, you know, how to rest your guys, how to, you know, how to be ready for the week, especially in this league, how to be prepared for the weekends and how important those midweek games are. I mean, we've shown year in and year out that the committee really holds a lot of stock in a non-conference schedule, you know, as, as they do the selection. So, you know, this is that this has certainly been a challenge now. I've inherited the last two years. A lot of the schedule was already done prior yeah. to. There's been some tweaks and some changes, uh, but you're right. We're going to have to open up. I mean, those first those first five weeks, we're we're, we're going to be on the road, which which isn't uncommon for a lot of teams and a lot of very good teams. Um, so we want to challenge ourselves. You know, the first thing is is we're going to open up this year at Rice University down in Houston, and then we're going to go down to Florida International and Miami. I usually like to bus the third weekend because I want to get the guys accustomed to at least busing at some point as well. So we try to bus down into the Nashville area, um, just dead south of here. And then really we open up ACC play that fourth weekend. Um, and for us, that starts spring break. So we'll leave here um, on a Thursday afternoon and literally be gone for uh, 10 days or so you know, 10 or 11 days as we start to open up the ACC play on the front end, we kind of bookend ACC road series with two games in the midweek. So we'll play over the course of those 10 games, we'll play eight games. And so that's really where for me, I feel like we hit our, we hit our stride. And and that's one of the challenge, one of the challenges I've, that I've seen different from Virginia was just, it takes us a little bit longer to start our midweek competition um, you know, here when you're, when you're dealing with our climate here. So, you know, trying to get creative with ideas of how to get into that flow of, of the midweek games. Cause as you, as you know, baseball is a game of, of repetition and you need, you know, once you start playing and baseball players, I've found of all are always the same. Once, once you're inside and you go outside, you never want to go inside again. Once you start playing games, going back to a practice or an inner squad loses it, you know, you have to, you, you, you want to keep your guys playing many, many times and keep them in that rhythm. And so that's been the biggest challenge, but you got to get creative. You got to, you got to, you know, be willing to work. And, and we do, we do see it as an advantage. You know, when we leave for these first five weeks, I tell the guys all the time, a lot of times postseason play, except for very few teams is spent traveling that last month of the year. We're already going to be used to that. You know, if, if we get sense out somewhere, if we don't have the opportunity to host, we know already that we've spent four weeks on the road in hotels, things like that. So we're already experienced for it. We have our road legs underneath us and it's not going to affect us at all. Yeah. Um, how have you talked to your team about and maybe this is the same as it was last year and hasn't really changed a lot just about um, the, the schedule less in terms of the the travel and what that can present but more in terms of the opponents. I mean, I see what four top 15 preseason teams on the schedule for yeah. you guys including a number 1 Wake Forest. Um again, it's no surprise to anyone who ends up at Notre Dame playing baseball. The ACC is very good. It's no surprise yeah. to you or anyone 
um, I would imagine who is is listening or watching our, our conversation right now. Um, how, how do you talk about sort of high competition with your your program in that way? Well, you, you know, it's it's not really that big of a problem here because when, when if you choose Notre Dame, we, we we talk about this all the time in everything we do. You're choosing hard. Like we talk, like, like it's one of our one of our slogans here. Choose hard. Um, you're choosing to be challenged every day academically, and, and then of course you're being you're choosing to be challenged every weekend athletically um, with the schedule that we play in the ACC. So really, our guys have that mindset already that if you don't want to be challenged or want to be up against uh, the best in the world, then you don't you don't want to come to Notre Dame because really the challenge in the classroom is probably even more rigorous and tougher than the, you know, the SEC of, uh, or the ACC of baseball. Right. Like, so, um, you know, so it's a challenge. It, everything we do is a challenge. Now I think the other piece is there's a couple things. One, you have to keep the mindset on your progress and how you're getting better. Like that's the first thing, because again, you can play really, really good games in this league and lose plain and simple. Um, this in and, and it's really, really hot to ever get on a big heater in this league, right? Because it's just not it, this is this league's about grinding it out. You're you're winning your series at home and and you know, trying to not get swept on the road and 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 sneak a series here or there and, and do those things. So you really have to keep your pro your process on what you can do to get better and organize and organizing yourself. And really the, the biggest you know, thing that I talk to our guys about is just managing those expectations is, is just, you know, they all expect, and, and that's, you know, Notre Dame students are these high achievers. They all expect always and to, and to get a hit every time. And this league is not like that. This league will chew you up. And so you have to be able to, to understand, you know, that, you know, there are going to be days where it doesn't go as well as expected we have to get up, evaluate what we what we learn from it, what we can do better, move on to the next day and continue to, to, to just grind at it. And so I think that's the biggest lesson is just really trying to manage those expectations with the guys. Yeah, I love it, man. Um, something I'm fascinated by as as I'm, I'm getting to know you and how how you're you're running that program. They are now entering year number two. Your three pillars for the program. Oh. Our first two are development and service. I think those are, are pretty self-explanatory, but you're welcome, obviously, to speak on those if you want. Um, the third is being men of hope. Could you describe what you mean by that? I, I love this. Well, I, I think from all three of them, you know, and, and you've done your homework, so I, I, you had to dig pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Um, that, you know what? Shout out Claire Kramer, your wonderful uh, athletic communication best. person with the program. Yeah. There. He's, she's, no. He provided me with that, so I, I can't yeah. take too much credit. <laughs> Claire, Claire is wonderful. Um, you know, I, I think we look at them because every everybody you say development and and service is is pretty you know straightforward, and, and we just try to look at them from a different angle. Is one from the development of four sides, right? We're, we're, we're trying to, we have to develop relationships with the players. That's the first thing that we're here to do. That's why we all got into this sport from there. Once you develop that, you can, you can start to help to develop the player because he trusts you. Right. And I, as I've always seen, as players start to get better, they get more confidence, they show more confidence on campus and they, they develop into, and they make, they make, they start making tough decisions with confidence. That's develop. That's the, that's developing into a man. And uh, once you start making tough decisions, you bring others with you, develop it the leader. So that's that's how we kind of look at the development piece. The service piece, you know, we always want to service the mission of the university. But more so, I think, uh, you know, going back to you have such high achievers in this in this group. And so many times they can get in internal. M many of us can. I think the easiest way to get outside of your own head is do something for the guy next to you. You know, just 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 help him along the way. And I think that's the easiest way to to release some anxiety. But when it comes to men of hope, that's a little bit more university driven. That's a university uh, motto and something that I just think as we send these young men out into the world and we as we send these leaders out into the world, what else do we want them to do but bring hope to others? You know, and I tell our guys every day is when we walk into the room, I want every other athletic team, every other student body to be like, oh, good, baseball's here. 
everything will be okay from here, you know? And so um, I just want us to always, to always look for what the next challenge is and accept the next challenge. I think, I think too often we think that, and one of the things that we lose sight of in life is that, that we, that we will arrive that at some point it'll get easier and life doesn't, you know, there's always more work to do. There's always the next challenge. There's always the next, the next obstacle. You're never going to arrive. Therefore you have to bring hope. You have to bring hope that you can that you're going to be able to tackle that, that you're going to have a plan to be able to tackle whatever's in front of you. And so we just talk about that all the time is, is be men of hope everywhere you go. Bring hope. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this season. You guys are, are in my neck of the woods a couple of times. I don't have all my Good. assignments yet, but, um, you know, maybe maybe I'll see you down the road this season and get to call some some Notre Dame games. And if that's the case, we'll obviously catch up before then. But please, um, yeah, Sean, I really do appreciate the time. Uh, best of luck entering year number two. Again, I'm excited to see what uh, the Fighting Irish have to offer. And um, you know, it, opening day it's it's coming up on us before we know it. I'm just know. I'm just I'm pumped up for for obvious <laughs> reasons. I'm fired up. So uh, thanks again you know, for the time. You- you and I both there, and it's an exciting time of year. And, and so but I, I just want to say one more time, thank you to what you're doing, D1 Baseball. I know Danny couldn't get on the on the call today, but we all – we really appreciate the way you guys drive our our sport forward. And, and uh, baseball's never been in a – college baseball's never been in a better place. We're happy to do it, and obviously with a, a lot of help from the guys who have, have been here at D1 Baseball long before us um, really driving that train. So uh, we will take a little bit of the credit, but not too much, Sean, right? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> cool. All right, Sean. Um, again, good luck this year. We'll catch up soon. Thank you. Take care.